What's going on everybody? Michael Silva here. Welcome to the Stock Market Brief Show. For those that are new here, welcome to the channel. This is the show that we use technical analysis and intermarket analysis to get a good idea as to where the market might be headed. Hopefully everyone's having a nice and calm holiday season as the market's just now opened up. We got a full trading week ahead of us. Coming into 2022, we see the markets absolutely ripping. FOMO, it's a real thing. I have a strong feeling people are going to be chasing into this rally as fast as they can. So I want to provide some key levels and some insight as to what I'm seeing taking place. Let's go ahead and hop into today's episode. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. Now, if you haven't watched the last couple of episodes, we are getting prepared for the Santa Claus quote-unquote rally, and we got it, right? And it, we were getting prepared during a time where there was actually quite a bit of fear in the markets. And I want to kind of reiterate this point. There's going to be a lot of times where it might come like we're going kind of back and forth, like, up, oh, it's going to be bullish, oh, it's going to be bearish, up, oh, it's going to be bullish, etc. And and the reason for that is during times where stock market volatility is increasing or it's at higher levels, that is where the retail side of traders, which is a big portion, they can really blow up accounts and they can get tossed around, you know, just absolutely just sloshed around as volatility is high. If you're not very tactical in that environment, it's times where, you know, breakout trading doesn't work as well. And you have to be very tactical from an intraday perspective and or just be very patient on overextended fading to either upside or downside. Okay, so today, as the market's rallying to all-time highs, I want to just provide insight as, as to why or, and where the risk to reward actually is right now. And it's probably not the best thing to just run into and chase if you're approaching it with a mentality that, hey, it's going to just continue to go higher and you're not going to focus on the risk aspect of all of it. So let's just take a look at the market dashboard and then we'll get into all the charts. From a from a dashboard perspective, we're looking at the 11 sectors here. Energy led the way, technology and real estate. Utilities was down there at the bottom. It's it's kind of a mixed bag right here, you know, tech and the consumer discretionary is down here. Sometimes those move hand in hand and we can see consumer staples, you know, this is more defensive right in the middle. This is defensive. It's more towards the top three and then this is defensive. So it's a really spread out board overall. But when you take a look at it, everything was in the green. So it's hard to say, you know, anything's really bearish right there. If we take a look at the indices over here, we have small caps took a nice big move to the upside up 1.44%. The NASDAQ 100, which is tech, up 1.59%. The VIX slightly down on the day from a percentage basis terms. And the S&P 500 was up 1.38%. Make no mistake, that is a very strong move coming right out of Christmas. And this is when that Santa Claus rally typically starts. So let's hop into the um, indices here. Let's look at the S&P 500 from a weekly perspective. Look at, we gapped slightly up and we started rallying. This is known as a breakaway gap. So we were consolidating. We met, we mentioned this a few days ago, this low right here saying basically get prepared for it. And we've, we've rallied straight up since that point on a day by day basis. And now we're coming back into the upper Bollinger band hand from a weekly perspective. It's Monday, right? So there's a lot of time left in the week. Um, so I'm not going to give too much, too much onto this one chart. So let's go into the smaller charts. And what you'll see here is I have two lines. I have this upper line and I have this lower line. Those is what the options market priced in from an expected move perspective. And they said, hey, you know, coming into next week, this is the range of volatility that we should be keeping an eye on. 70% of the time or so, it lands within here. So it'll expire within there from an options perspective. And in one single day, we're reaching just about to the upper edge of that expected move. Now, last week, we were preparing saying, hey, if we get one big spike down Monday and or Tuesday, be prepared to buy. And that options expired move was around up here to 470 and it was down here. So what we saw is we saw it move all the way to the bottom, tag it, and then close right here at the top. So talk about just absolutely incredible amounts of volatility in the markets. And now, very similarly, instead of tagging it from the bottom perspective, we're coming right here to the upper edge. Now, does that mean we're going to click here and then we're just going to come right back down here? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I want to point out that the options market price in this move and we're already pretty much meeting it. 
Can we get above it? Yes, absolutely. And that can actually cause even more of a squeeze. But what's important to note is just how far we came to get into this price. So if you're just, if you missed out on this opportunity here and then you're chasing it up here, I mean, you tell me what you think is a good risk to reward now from, you know, it could, you could be like, well, I'm, I'm playing the breakouts. And, you know, if it comes back in, I'm just going to get stopped out and wait to see what happens. Maybe put in another order if my order gets picked up and then head up. That I would understand. But if you're just buying here, and then all of a sudden we come back down here and then you're like, okay, now I'm just going to sell because I think the market's crashing. And then we rip up again. What you'd notice is we're just consolidating back and forth. So just be mindful of where we stand overall. Let's hop into the 15 minute time frame. And from a 15 time, 15 minute perspective and even an hourly and two hour perspective, I mean, just look at this incredible move. It's straight up right? And the RSI has been burnt to a crisp, but it continues to head higher. We do have a small negative divergence there, right? So if we gap up tomorrow, I would expect to see some selling early on and, and potentially bring this back into, you know, more, you know, it, it, at least into this range in the RSI, just to kind of burn off some of those um, overextended areas. Now, what's interesting to me is this has been rallying. Meanwhile, the PMO, the momentum here has been actually flattening out. So there's a divergence there too, as well taking place. But I, you know, from a bullish perspective, we're above the five day moving average. The five day moving average is rather neutral on this chart. So we can't put too much weight on it. But if we do get some sell side activity, I'd be keeping an eye on the five day moving average, as well as this volume shelf profile right here, right at around 466 to 468, kind of in that zone if we start to see some digestion. So if you believe that we're going to see some continued upside, what I would say is, yes, we can keep going up straight up. Like that's obvious, but I would say start looking for specific pullbacks and then start looking at areas of support um, in order to just amplify your, you know, just uh, your risk to reward perspective. And it could give you just obviously better entries. Um, so that's what I'm seeing there on the SPY. If we take a look at the volatility index, that has been getting crushed down. But uh, the risk remains these four open gaps still above us. All right, so we got down through this key level here. You can see it was support there, it was support there, and it was support there, and it was actually resistance here, and it was resistance there. So it's pretty key level, that 1850 to 19 range. And then when we broke down, we came back up to back test it and then got rejected. But what I want to call out here is we're kind of wedging right now as it stands. Volatility is contracting from a Bollinger Band perspective. And if you've heard me say this multiple times, the Bollinger Bands, they contract and they expand. So, you know, things that contract will eventually expand and then things that expand will eventually contract, right? So we expanded here and we've been contracting here and you can see the Bollinger Bands are getting rather tight. So as Bollinger Bands tighten, that means an expansion is coming. That is not directional bias. So I'm not saying it's going to pop up and hit all these, but wanna, I just want to point your attention to the positive divergence. The Bollinger Bands are contracting tightly. We have a little bit of a wedge pattern and we have some gaps above us. Meanwhile, as I already stated, the S&P 500 has been just ripping and ripping. Woo to the moon. <laughs> it has been riffing higher and higher. So from a risk to reward standpoint, you know, back to my point, is it the best time to enter right here or to wait for pullbacks? I'll let you decide for yourself. Me personally, I want to find better entries because, you know, it just gives me once again, better risk to reward. I was prepared down here where this little island reversal pattern is. Okay. And then I got to scalp, I got to trade up into here and I took some profits and I took a little bit more profits. And now I'm back to basically neutral on my positions, looking for either a short entry and or a pullback to go long. All right. And that could be in the S&P 500 or it can be in individual names. Let's go ahead and continue to look at a couple indicators. First, we're going to look at the percent of stocks above the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. These are breadth indicators. It allows us to see, okay, if the market's moving up, is other stocks participating in the move? And in this rally right here, we saw from a low to a high, a low to a high. So there are stocks participating in this rally, and that is good. However, I want to call to your attention that there is still a divergence taking place. And by the divergence, I mean the percent of stocks above the 50-day moving average right now are lower than they were right here in you know early November. So basically, the price action is taking us higher and breaking out. Meanwhile, the percent of stocks are still at a negative divergence from both a 50-day and 200-day moving average perspective. 
Okay, so that says to me there are very few stocks. There's more, you know, helping this rally, but there's fewer stocks participating it at its current high versus this previous high there in early November. So it's a slight divergence that can change, but it's something to call out. Now, if we take a look at another indicator, this is the advanced decline line. It's measuring advances, uh, stocks that are advancing and declining. And we're looking at it in... Um, there's many different ways that you can look at this, but I want to pay, to pay attention to this particular way. And then we'll go into, um, I think I have the cumulative line chart with me. I'll, I'll double check here in a moment. But what I want to call out here is the market really did rip higher. And we talked about this being a pretty extended area from up here. And that was basically this move as coming into a previous area of resistance. Then we saw the price come down a little bit. And now today it put in a new high in the S&P 500, but not a new high reading right here. So what I see here is also a slight negative divergence. Now, this doesn't mean that it's going to stop off right here, or it doesn't mean that it's going to continue to move up or stall out or die down. That's all I'm saying. But what I am calling out is the fact that you have diverging internals from a stock market that continues to perpetuate itself higher into that expected upper edge um, expected move that we recently just discussed. Now, if we look at the BPSP, actually, wait, no, I have the advance and decline chart here. We, uh, last time I brought this up, we were talking about the lower low here, but yet the RSI was putting the higher high and we saw it obviously bounce from those levels. This took up two and it took stocks with it as well. So this is advanced decline line from a cumulative perspective, but overall you can still see here, it's treading sideways. As the market is breaking out, we haven't seen the advanced decline line take out that previous high. So the so it's still a divergence there at the, this particular point in time. If we take a look at the BPSPX chart, this is measuring point and figures, you know, what's the percent of stocks on buy signals? Um, 60.8 is the reading as of right now. Um, and as it stands, I like to use this as a signal chart from both a overextended to the downside or um, overextended to the upside perspective from an RSI standpoint. And what we saw was this getting to overextended to the downside territory. So we said, hey, look for positive divergences to potentially form. And, you know, it's not the type of area where you'd want to go short. And well, we were right. The market started rallying. But what I'll call out here is there's still more room for it to potentially head higher. And that doesn't mean it's going to go into overextended territory, but it does give us that, it gives the market still more room to potentially continue running. So what we'll pay attention for is if this does come into that overextended territory, so we'll be keeping an eye on it. Now, if we take a look at the NYSE, this is the McClellan Summation Index paired with the NYMOT. Um, these are just both McClellan um, tools, so McClellan, uh, McClellan Summation Index and the Nisey McClellan oscillator here. And one thing to call out is this has been heading down as price has been going up. We're starting to see it kind of uptick right here. And I overlaid the parabolic SAR um, to this. And you can see here, now we have a SAR reading that kind of clicked below this. So that tells us that this could potentially be uh, an early um, indicator that momentum is shifting or ch you know change in change in momentum is shifting so this can continue to head up which could help the price obviously perpetuate itself higher as the market press is higher just keep in mind though we're still below zero so it's better to see this indicator above zero and trending up uh, the nine mot nice mcclellan oscillator here is getting to a little bit of a frothy territory. It's been to these areas before, but just be mindful that that's when it, it got those readings before when it came from overextended readings from the downside. And we didn't really get an overextended move to the downside. You know, that, that was too strong of a move, but we are getting it a little bit, uh, you know, a high reading up in these levels. So what we can look for is potentially negative divergences to form. For example, like this one gave us an early indication that we might start seeing the market roll over, which we discussed when it was actually taking place right before that market started to roll over. Now, one thing also to call out is this is the, the I use this as a buy and sell signal. We're basically taking the put to call ratio, smoothing it over a 10 day period to make it easier to read. That's the black line, it's smoothed. And then the line behind it is the put to call ratio. And I call this out right here on this day as it got a 0.95 reading. Uh, the title of the video was, I just got a buy signal. And you know, a lot of people were like, what do you mean you just got a buy signal? The market looks like it's falling apart. Well. 
technically a 0.95. That's actually not the buy signal, which was obviously stated. It's when it crosses below 0.95, that's the buy signal. So the next day it crossed below it, all right? And then that was the technical buy signal. So if you were ready to buy the following trading day, that was actually that market bottom on Monday. And from that point, if you you know were looking at the other videos, we've we got to see a pretty extensive rally. That's not the that's not typical to see by any means, but you know it played out in our favor if you were long and you were prepared. But what I want to call out now is now the put to call ratio is getting slammed down. We're getting a 0.67 reading as of right now. The 10 day moving average is falling off a cliff at this particular point as the market has been rallying extensively to the upside. So what I want to call out here is from a sell signal perspective, not meaning that the market's going to crash, but it does tell me, hey, potentially start taking some profits, let a couple runners run or up your stop losses, etc. Right now, it is just heading southbound to that 0.80. Now, when it crosses below 0.80, that's not a sell signal. That's kind of just giving us the warning. Okay, you know, just be prepared. You know, if this starts turning back around, then we might get that sell signal. Okay, so as this is heading lower, that'll give us the warning sign to just, you know, tighten up our positions potentially a little bit, just be more mindful. But when it starts crossing from the beneath to above 0.8, that is when that sell signal occurs. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on this, but I want to just call out, it is moving pretty quickly down to that warning territory, but the put to call ratio, I mean, it could end up right here tomorrow. Like it can, it could hop around very, very quickly. And this can start to turn around and it could stay within the zone for a very long period of time. I just want to call out as it stands right now, where it is is okay so let's go ahead and look at one more thing this is looking at tips over treasury bonds you're not going to see anybody ever post this chart because most people need reasons as to why something happens and i don't have the understanding or or, or or knowledge as to why this is happening but i can call out and point to facts that hey for some reason when the tips outperform bonds and it reaches a rate of change above 1.3 to 1.5 you typically get volatility shortly thereafter. Why is that? I don't know, and I don't really care. Um, but I will tell you this, the last time that this triggered was right here, and that was in mid-November. And when we got that, I let everyone know as soon as we were crossing up, hey, you know, be careful. This has been a leading indicator of volatility for not one, not two, not three, but the last four four out of four times, it has let us know that volatility might be stepping in. And you can see the red line. We got volatility spike. We got a volatility spike. We got a volatility spike. We got a little volatility spike. And then this one, well, we got a pretty big volatility spike. So the reason why I'm showing you this now is because tips are starting to outperform treasury bonds at this particular moment. And the rate of change, we just saw it get back above zero. And if it starts to creep itself a little bit higher, as you know, volatility is still kind of just pressing itself more and more uh, down, which we went into that 30 minute chart, that could give us once again, an early indication um, that we might get some sort of volatility spike, especially how we have those three or four gaps, whatever it was still above us at this particular point in time. So that's also something to just be mindful of um, and be aware of. So you're not just jumping into the market, you know, full of FOMO that you're going to miss out on this breakout. All right. If you want to jump in and you want to be part of the FOMO, you can do so just like I said, like have an ideal stop in place for if it just reversed on us really quickly. And don't be mad that if you get stopped out and don't average down on a losing trade, what you want to do is just let the market digest its current gains if you get stopped out and then wait for it to set up again. You just need to be patient. Let's hop in the NASDAQ 100 weekly chart breaking out of this tight consolidation here. Um, but at, you know, as we stated already, you know, this is a weekly chart. It's only Monday. PPO is starting to curl itself back up here. We'll see if we get that bullish crossover from weekly, pers weekly perspective here, um, you know, coming into January or so. Uh, it's too way too early to tell at this particular point in time. Uh, but from a bullish perspective, but like I said, higher highs, higher lows, 30 week is nice and diagonal right from the bottom left to the top right of the screen. We're still in a bull trend, uh, a bullish context, people. Now, if we take a look at the cues on the daily perspective, just look at this move. Bam, huge and very aggressive. Now, I want to talk to you about momentum. 
Okay, so momentum is important to watch. And the way that we can range volatility and momentum is by looking at the length and range of the candles, meaning you look at the lower um, and the higher price and then also the body. Okay, so the bodies are important to watch. So from here, this was a little hammer candle, right? So it could have signaled, you know, a potential bounce area as it was coming into an area of support. And that's what we got. Okay, and in this day, it actually, this these three bar candles is what's known as a morning star as we saw weakness here, then closed above this one that gave us an early indication saying, hey, there's some strength coming in and we call that out on various tech stocks like Microsoft and Google. The next candle completely, you know, from basically open to close, very bullish. The next one also, you know, a smaller body, but also very bullish as it was coming into previous area resistance. This candle right here, obviously is very bull and this is a shaven candle right basically opened and straight up and closed at its high so another very bullish candle so does this mean that you know like some people might short this and fade it you know and they could get they can get lucky but just be mindful that this type of momentum this has not slowed down at this particular point in time yet typically when you get these large moves they're accompanied by some volume at least too but you can see here a couple of interesting things this rally has been a pretty aggressive move on a lot of declining volume and to me that's a di that's a divergence there um in and of itself and it's hard to really determine this one because we're at the holiday season and you know we're, we're still seeing decent volume but the fact that we're getting this massive rally on such low volume should be should be a little bit of a warning sign as of right now until we potentially get you know a big volume bar in to support the move now, what would be very dangerous is all of a sudden we break out to these highs, but then we see a pretty strong move to the downside accompanied by a huge volume bar. So that would tell me, oh, so there's basically low volume on the way up, big volume on the way down. That to me is not a healthy sign. And it does show periods of, that shows me that this is a period of distribution. Um, it's still, like I said, early to tell, but just be mindful that we haven't seen smaller bodies yet. So, you know, for example, if we get a big candle that moves up higher tomorrow, like starts pressing up and it's one big green candle and more people chase into it and it, like, it hits the all time high, but then all of a sudden you get sellers into it. So it creates a shooting star type candle. You know, that's a reversal type candle that, you know, it doesn't mean that things are going to reverse, but it, it, it states that if we get a follow through, you know, be very mindful especially if it's a red candle with more volume coming in, that that could just mean that we're still obviously in this trading, you know, range as it stands right now. So just be mindful like, okay, so well, there's probably, there's some supply up here. There's trap supply right here. Price has already made an aggressive move. So you're basically, if you go along right here, you have a reward up here until you run into some previous supply and your risk is right back to the lower end of the channel. So, or even into the middle of the channel. So the risk to reward from a long perspective, it just doesn't make sense here. Um, but I'm not that, you know, what I'm tr not, I'm not trying to say that it can't go higher because one, it's the beginning of a Santa rally uh, and, and it's typical to see these type of moves. So um, we have the bullish, uh, the bullish crossover here. So that's also a good sign. But what I would like to see is some consolidation or a pullback or something like that. And just be very uh, mindful of watching the volume coming into quarter end, by the way, and year end. So there's going to be a lot of rebalancing, a lot of weird things taking place. So to make predictions as of right now, it's, it's, it's almost pointless. All you have to do is just be prepared and mindful that we're coming into a quarter end, month end, year end. So you do, you're you going to see a lot of, you know, a lot of weird behavior in the overall markets. Now, if we take a look at the 15 minute time frame, huge rally, you know, very similar to the SPY, RSI is getting cooked. Now look at the momentum, you know, the PMO, it's not going anywhere as price continues to rally higher right there. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just weird price action overall we're getting uh, you know pretty extended from the five day moving average and it's very typical to reconnect with that very frequently um, you can see here even the five day moving average it's really neutral so if we get too overextended from it you know people are going to take profits they're not going to try they're not you know professional traders they're not going to want to go long at these levels well actually technically coming into year end as they're window dressing their portfolios <laughs> who really knows so it's very hard to determine but just be mindful that you know the five day moving average most frequently tagged um moving average here typically gets 
um, tagged frequently. Now this can go up, and then we can watch for a tag as it comes into a volume shelf profile or a volume shelf profile down here. Um, and, you know, be mindful, these, these volume shelf profiles, they can act like magnets. So if the price gets too far away, it can come right back down and retest that level, okay? So let's continue on. Couple indicators. This is the advanced decline line with a couple EMAs associated with it. We talked about that positive divergence and we're getting that rally, right? Um, however, we're still below zero. Um, and you know, it's best when these two EMAs are above zero and obviously trending up. And we're just not there yet, okay? So, um, not far, but we're just not there at this particular point in time. Uh, the BP chart, this is a little bit more frothy than the SPX, BPSPX chart. So we're seeing a nice move, very strong. Um, however, we're still not overextended. So this tells me we still have room to kind of reach up higher and then just be mindful. <laughs> you know, we called out this negative divergence, market sold off. Now we're moving into that overextended territory, right? Uh, is it best, I mean, sh should you be going long when it's overextended to the upside? Uh, I mean, that doesn't offer me the best risk to reward. That's not something I want to do. I want to go long um, or press a little bit harder on my long positions when we're overextended to the downside coming into an area of support. But when we're overextended to the upside coming into areas of resistance or even if we're at like an all-time high and a very overextended move or, you know, a kind of an exhaustion type, you know, gap that took place and we're overextended, that's when obviously I want to make sure that I'm having profits locked in. All right, now let's look at the BP COMPQ. This is NASDAQ composite. This is not the NASDAQ 100, tracks way more stocks. We had that positive divergence. I talked about, you know, how I spotted this on the chart as we were starting to see a big rally. Um, that was on my Twitter. If you don't follow me, you can follow me there. But we still actually have some more room to potentially run here too as well on this specific chart. And also just to note, I mean, be mindful because we're coming into an area of resistance also on the BP um, the NASDAQ composite chart there as well. But yep, still potential room to rally up higher at this particular point in time. Now let's hop into some, actually, no, let's go into the Russell 2000. It's kind of going a little bit longer than I wanted, but that's okay. It's been a while since I posted a video. Uh, we had this falling wedge. We're starting to get that nice big move. Where are we overall? We're right back in the middle of this long-term channel. You know, so we had the bullish crossover, positive. We're still below zero. RSI is back above 50. That's also good. Price is coming back to the middle of the channel. So if you caught this move and if you are prepared, this is a good place. Obviously, just this previous day of trading too, obviously good place to remove some profits as we're starting to rally, but the volume continues to decline here, which is just an interesting perspective as of right now. Is there more gas in its tank? There can absolutely be more gas in the tank, but just be mindful that we're just in a trading range. So yeah, the upper edge is right here around 230. The lower edge is around 210 to 212. And then we had this bear trap right here as price broke out, everyone is excited. And then we're like, it'd be dirty if it just crossed right back within. And that's exactly what it did. All right. So as people, you know, see this breakout and you know, if your first sign is to go all in on it, and then this happens and then you don't get out or if you don't manage the trade properly that blows that blows up a huge trade or you know or blows up a portfolio if you're not managing that risk um, properly or your position size properly so as it stands right now this move it's getting overextended we're coming into the upper bollinger band which is also in confluence with the 50 day moving average we're in the middle of a trend right here um, and we're at previous areas of resistance and resistance okay so if it starts breaking above all these levels that can free us up they can call this a double bottom as it goes boom 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 but also to note i mean it would be nicer if it just consolidated here for a little bit and then broke out, um, then it would be a lot stronger of a move in my opinion versus just kind of a straight up rally. And then all of a sudden we get a 50% retracement of this specific rally, which is more than possible. You typically see these strong, strong moves, they get retraced by like 50% um, fairly quickly. All right, if we take a look at the 15 minute time frame, getting a little overextended on the RSI right here, we're back above that five day moving average. The five day moving average is rather um, it's flattening out, but it was basically declining. Now we're getting to neutral, trying to get back into a positive territory there. You can see market's been rallying, momentum been dying out, RSI, negative divergence there too as well. So it's forming somewhat of a bottoming pattern. Keep in mind, we have a gap right above us going up to around that 230 marker, 226 marker right here. So that can be an area of resistance to be, um, to key in on, to just be mindful for. Let's take a look at crypto now. Crypto, Check it out. Sailor to shift tool has now crossed through that zero line. That um, is not a buy signal yet. Um, it is how, I mean, it determines how you want to play it. So the strategy that I laid out 
When we cross above this, that is the technical buy signal. And I have a strategy of how I trade that. Um, but just be mindful that it's crossing over on a Monday and it hasn't actually had a weekly close above here. So by week end, this could actually just be right back down here or it can be right back down here. All right. So um, it, it's, it's, it's not a guarantee that it's actually going to close here yet. Um, so that is one thing that you want to be mindful. Of. If you want to front run it, that's totally fine to do. Um, and if you do want to front run it, I would say, let's pay attention to the price action of the chart. And we were looking previously, um, at this weekly candle and we said, Hey, if we engulf this body here and potentially get above this high on this weekly candle, that'd be very bullish. And we didn't quite get there, but we did get very close. We engulfed the previous body, which was this candle. And then basically we kind of stalled out here at around 52,500, um, uh, you know, give or take a few dollars. So from a price action perspective, if you want to front run this signal, it would be a little bit nicer if we start getting above that 52,500, this previously weak high right here. And then obviously this week right here, because as it stands right now, we are just going like this, um, which could be potentially obviously bear flagging. So this could be a fake out or not even a full signal yet, and it could, could potentially head right back down. So like I said, if you want to front run it and you want to buy early, that's fine. That's totally fine. Or if you want to enter in here, it could turn right back up and start breaking out. But just note that you want to make sure that you're managing your position size and managing your risk at this particular point in time. This by no means, okay? This tool is exactly what I said. It is a tool to help basically save from large moves to the downside and to potentially catch the longer moves to the upside. All right. So I kind of laid out a strategy for that. By no means is this the holy grail. It has been proven to work quite well. All right. But it's not a holy grail. Okay. So as it stands right now, it's a positive development, but it's not confirmed yet. And it's important to wait for confirmations. For example, when I got the buy signal, on this chart, we said, okay, it got to 0.95, but it got to 0.95. It didn't cross through, right? So we didn't get the confirmation. We got the confirmation the next day when business ended, the end of the trading day. So it was the following day that it was actually the full signal, all right? So as it stands right now, and which, by the way, the market headed lower, then the signal triggered. So if you waited, it played out better, but that's, you know, that doesn't always happen. Okay, so yes, we got the signal. You can front run this. You can front run it if you like. Yeah, that's totally fine. And you can, you know, uh, it, it, there's a million ways to do it. There's all kinds of different trading strategies. But by week's end, this might not be above zero. All right. It's as simple as that. Um, can it be? Obviously. And this is, you know, I liked how it's been turning up right here. We actually talked about it when it was starting to turn up and started to move higher. So even if you played it on the turn up, you would be, you'd be doing pretty good right now. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and go look at some daily charts. All right, so uh, Bitcoin on the daily time frame. Here's a couple things that I don't like as of right now. So first off, I do like, um, let's talk about what I like first, and then I'll get into what I don't like. I like the breakout of the falling wedge. Awesome. Okay, it's breaking out. We talked about this before the breakout, and we saw it move up. And that was also during the time where the sailor to shift ratio was turning up. So, you know, if you played it early, that makes sense. That's front running a signal. All right, at least that signal. And you're playing from price action perspective. There's nothing wrong with that. Here's what I don't like at this particular point in time. The S&P 500 is ripping, and to me, that shows that it's outperforming Bitcoin. And it's been outperforming Bitcoin really since early November. As you can see, the relative strength line is continuing to head down to flatten out right here. Okay, it's flattening out right here. I want to see this turn up. I want to see Bitcoin outperform the S&P 500. And we, even if you use this as a signal, right? So if this was a buy signal, that lines up with right here. This was a sell signal that lines up with right here. This was a technical whiplash. So it was a quick buy and then sell. And then it led to more of a sell off. All right. So right here, right? So buy signal, boom, moved up pretty high. Quick little whiplash sell signal, but then right back to buy and then started ripping up higher. So this also works. Now we're getting this move outside of this wedge on also declining volume. Now, you know, like I said, it's the holiday season. So it's very hard to determine whether or not volume is going to just come back in here come the new year. But as it stands right now, at least you should be be on 
guard that there's a breakout on lower volume taking place and it's underperforming the S&P 500. So from a price action perspective, if we start getting above 52,000, right? 52,000, 52,500, you know, that's a good sign. And then our next area to watch is this declining 50 day moving average. We need to recoup that, okay? A couple concerns, like I said, um, but a couple bullish things as well. Now let's take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum, also pretty similar story. It has been outperforming Bitcoin. However, it is still underperforming the S&P 500 at this particular point in time. It could be potentially wedging right here as like a little bear flag where we come right back down and base out even more to potentially break out. It's still too early to tell at this particular time. Right as it stands, we are just consolidating tightly right here. So there's probably gonna be a large move eventually here soon. Remember, contraction, leads to expansion, expansion leads to contraction, and so forth, okay? So what I'd like to see is this to start outperforming the S&P 500 to feel a little bit more comfortable, get back about that 42,000 or recover that 50-day moving average on that price. All right, that's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. Hope that helped out. Hope that helped give you some insight as to what I'm seeing coming into the new year. I am ready for an excellent new year too, coming in to 2022. Hope you're all ready too. Um, like I said, that's all I got for you. I'll be back here most likely tomorrow if there's some good moves in the markets. I've been pretty tied up, pretty busy working on a few things. So if I can't put out a video tomorrow, um, just be on the lookout for sure on Wednesday. Have a good night, everybody.